One aspect that makes chemistry marvelous, and sometimes challenging, is the abstract nature of its content. We see this when it comes to learning about the wonders of the atom, and when completing complex calculations for an experiment. Chemists study the behavior of atoms and molecules, which are the building blocks of matter, intending to understand how they interact and transform. On the surface, observing and quantifying something as infinitesimally small as an atom or molecule seems impossible. A single carbon atom has a mass of 1.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams, which is a barely measurable quantity even with the best equipment available. Yet, high school students can perform excellent experiments that accurately measure the numbers of atoms and molecules present in a sample or undergoing a reaction. Scientists have used a clever way to understand nature and quantify chemical reactions. They've used the concept of the mole. No, not that kind of mole. A mole is defined as containing 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, like atoms, molecules, formula units, and so on. Meaning, one mole of atoms represents 602 billion trillion atoms. This is known as Avogadro's number, or Avogadro's constant. And in this video, we'll examine how the mole is used in chemistry, and why it's accepted as the SI unit for describing the amount of substances. In 1811, the Italian Amadeo Avogadro proposed that equal volume of gases, at the same temperature and pressure, would contain the same number of particles, independent of the identity of the gas. This hypothesis provided the foundation from which subsequent chemists determine Avogadro's constant as 6.0111 times 10 to the 23rd. The International System of Units, SI, defines the mole as follows. One mole of any substance contains the same number of particles as there are atoms in exactly 12 grams of the pure carbon-12 isotope. Over time, this initial measurement has been refined, with Avogadro's constant now measuring a more precise 6.0221412 times 10 to the 23rd carbon-12 atoms in 12 grams of carbon. The carbon-12 isotope was chosen as the reference for several reasons including its abundance, stability, and being very close to exactly 12 atomic mass units, making it convenient to relate the mole to the mass scale. Avogadro's number is huge. In fact, it's simply unimaginable. To put this into perspective, think about a ball used for table tennis, with a standard size of about 40 millimeters in diameter. Now, try to imagine one mole of table tennis balls. Would they fill a room, a house, a stadium? Well, in fact, one mole of a standard-sized table tennis ball would cover the surface of the Earth about 60 miles, or 96 kilometers deep. For reference, Mount Everest, the highest peak on Earth, is about 9 kilometers tall, and cruising altitude on a flight is at about 10 kilometers. How is it, then, that a mole of carbon will fit nicely into the palm of your hand. And a mole of water is just about 18 centimeters cubed in volume. When we mix a number that is unimaginably large with a substance that is equally as unimaginably tiny, we create quantities that are somewhere in the middle with amounts that our brains can actually understand. This helps us see how the mole serves as a crucial bridge between the microscopic world of atoms and molecules and the macroscopic world of measurable quantities of chemical substances. The mole is used to quantify amounts of substances and track changes in chemical reactions. And as we shall see, working with the mole is a skill that is essential to the study of chemistry. Although Avogadro's constant is a huge number, it's convenient to think of a mole just as you would think about a dozen. A mole is a chemist dozen, if you will. Whether it be a dozen eggs, donuts, or elephants, a dozen will always refer to 12 of each. Nevertheless, we would never think that the mass of 12 eggs, donuts, and elephants would be the same. We could apply this logic to the concept of a mole. A mole of carbon, sulfur, and copper will each contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. 
but they will not weigh equal amounts. This is because the atomic structure of each element is different, with differing numbers of protons and neutrons. The masses of carbon, sulfur, and copper atoms are each unique. Therefore, just like eggs, donuts, and elephants, the masses of one mole of carbon, sulfur, and copper are also each unique. The mass per mole of an atom, molecule, ion, or any other particle is known as its molar mass. Mathematically, molar mass, shown as a capital M, is defined as a lowercase m over n. That is, mass in grams divided by moles. Molar mass will therefore have the units of grams per mole. We could find molar mass on the periodic table, labeled as the relative or average atomic mass of an element, again in grams per mole. We now know the following equivalencies. 1 mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, like atoms, molecules, ions, etc., and molar mass equals the mass of 1 mole of particles of that substance. We can use these definitions to calculate mass, moles, and number of particles interchangeably. For example, to convert between the mass of a sample and moles, we'll use molar mass. And to convert between moles and the number of particles in a sample, we can use Avogadro's constant. Summarizing these relationships using a diagram or a roadmap can be extremely useful as we get comfortable using the relationships as conversion factors. We'll see this as we look at a few sample calculations involving the mole. Let's start simple. If a sample of copper has a mass of 13.20 grams, how many moles of copper are in this sample? Since we're converting between mass and moles, we'll use molar mass as the bridge between the two units. Molar mass, remember, comes from the periodic table. For copper, its molar mass equals 63.55 grams per mole, meaning that one mole of copper weighs 63.55 grams. We can set up our calculation by taking our sample mass and dividing it by the molar mass of copper. If one mole of copper weighs 63.55 grams, then 13.20 grams of copper must contain 0.2077 moles. We can show this calculation generically in our diagram as we convert from mass to moles. In the opposite direction, we could convert from moles to mass by instead multiplying by the molar mass. Let's try our hand at a bit more complicated of a calculation. A sample of sulfur contains 5.98 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. What is the mass of this sample? For this calculation, we span between atoms and mass. This is a bit tougher to do, as we don't have a direct single conversion that will take us from atoms to grams. Instead, we must travel through moles, converting from atoms to moles, and then from moles to mass. To relate atoms to moles, we use Avogadro's constant, where one mole of sulfur equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd sulfur atoms. We'll divide the atoms of sulfur in the sample by this ratio to find the moles of sulfur. This is only the first step, but let's pause to show this calculation in our diagram. We converted from atoms to moles by dividing by Avogadro's constant. In the opposite direction, we could convert from moles to atoms by instead multiplying by Avogadro's constant. Continuing on, to convert from moles to mass, we'll use molar mass. For sulfur, one mole weighs 32.07 grams. We'll therefore multiply our number of moles of sulfur by the element's molar mass to find the total mass of sulfur in the sample. Remember, these conversions are essential to the study of chemistry. Creating and understanding a diagram like this can prove to be an extremely useful exercise that I would encourage you to try out. In the previous examples of molar calculations, we only referred to pure elements. In practice, chemists work with a variety of substances. In fact, in the definition of the mole, we noted that the particles could be atoms, molecules, ions, formula units, or other types of particles that might arise in chemical calculations. For example, mole calculations might involve molecules of water, sodium chloride formula units, or perhaps just sodium ions. The number and variety of substances used in chemical calculations are seemingly endless. 
So let's take a look at how to find the molar mass for particles other than just atoms. The definition for molar mass remains the same. Molar mass equals the mass of one mole of particles of that substance. But for substances containing more than a singular atom or ion, we'll find its molar mass by adding together the atomic masses of each atom in its chemical formula. For example, to find the molar mass of H2O, water, we take hydrogen's atomic mass of 1.01 two times, as there are two hydrogens, plus oxygen's molar mass one time, as it only appears once in the compound formula. This gives water a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole, meaning one mole of water weighs 18.02 grams. For individual ions, like the magnesium ion here, its molar mass remains consistent with what is found on the periodic table. Compared to protons and neutrons, electrons contribute practically zero mass to an atom, so losing or gaining electrons will not affect the overall molar mass. You'll also hear the terms relative atomic mass, AR, and relative formula mass, MR. Recall that the definition of a mole is based on the carbon-12 isotope. Likewise, this reference is extended to the definition of relative atomic mass. Here, the mass units will cancel, making the relative atomic mass a unitless value. The definition of relative formula mass is simply the sum of all of the relative atomic masses of elements contained in the compound. This is also unitless. In summary, the mole acts as the bridge between the microscopic realm of atoms and the macroscopic realm of measurable quantities. Avogadro's constant can be thought of as a chemist dozen, where one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. This staggering number allows high school students and scientists alike to accurately quantify the unseeable and conduct precise experiments and calculations. Additionally, we'll use the periodic table to find the molar mass of a singular element or a compound by taking the sum of atomic masses for each atom in the chemical formula. For IB chemistry students, mastering the mole is essential as it forms the foundation for various calculations, provides a fundamental understanding of chemical quantities and reactions, and gives us insight into that in which we cannot easily see.